The OCI 460.10 is a Modbus interface module for the LME 7 flame safety to communicate to a PLC or an HMI. Let's review how to use it. This interface module can output Modbus RTU or Modbus TCP IP. T1 is the 24 volt AC or DC port. T2 is the RTU RS485 output. T3 is not needed when interfacing with the LME7. And T4 is where the LME7 is connected. We'll need a phone cable to connect the LME7 to T4. The LME7 has an RJ11 port to connect right in. The other end of the cable needs to be cut and wired into the T4 as shown here. The ethernet port is to output Modbus TCP IP to your system. The USB-C port is used for software updates. The plug set is sold separately. There are three LED lights. Downlink LED enunciates the status of the OCI 460 talking to the flame safety. Solid green is proper operation. Uplink LED is the status of the ethernet connection. Flashing green is proper operation there. The status LED enunciates the status of the OCI 460. This will be solid green for normal operation. The OCI 460 can be configured with an online interface. We can change Modbus settings such as address, baud rate, parity, stop bits, response delay, and timeout. To configure the unit, we'll need to connect 24 volt power to T1 and connect the ethernet port to your PC. Using the end of a paperclip, push the T5 button for five seconds. Notice the up and down link LED change orange. The unit will reboot itself, which takes approximately 30 seconds. Once complete, the status LED will be solid green and the up and down links will be solid orange. To use the online interface, we need the last six digits of the MAC address. And here, in this case, as an example, it's F1, E3, A5. We're going to need these digits for the web address. The next step is to go to the web browser and type in HTTP colon backslash backslash OCI 460 underscore and then those six characters from the MAC address which in our unit is F1, E3, A5, without the dashes. And then once you hit enter, you'll see this sign-in screen. The username is admin, and the password is SBT admin explanation point. We then enter the password, which is four zeros. We are now at the configuration page. At this point, it's helpful to think of the OCI 460 in terms of input and output. Think of the input as the settings to communicate with the flame safety. Think of the output as the settings to communicate with a PLC or HMI. Let's start with the input and communicating to the LME7. We'll go to Modbus, and then we'll scroll down to Modbus Master TTL. Match the required settings to communicate with the LME7. You shouldn't have to change any of these settings because the defaults already match the LME7. Now that the input is taken care of, let's think about output. 
the output of the OCI 460 can be Modbus RTU or Modbus TCP IP. While we're on the correct page, let's start with a Modbus RTU as the output. We scroll to Modbus Slave RS-485. This is the Modbus RTU output to your PLC or HMI. Make Modbus settings changes here to match your settings. For the output with Modbus TCP IP, we'll need to go back to the start page, click on IP config, set the DHCP to passive to enable the use of a fixed IP address. You can now change any Modbus TC TCP IP settings. Let's change the IP address just to demonstrate it. Then click apply. After any settings are changed, a restart is required. To do that, find the restart here, and then hit execute, and then hit apply. Wait until the down and uplink LED are both flashing before disconnecting the PC. This takes approximately one minute. And this is how you configure the OCI 460.